the gap, standing for Jesus. Standing in the gap for family and friends. Standing in the gap, one love for all, so we all can make it in. What we like to do too in our uh, study is to keep you uh, up on current events. Marvel's been handling the, uh, what we call the Gap News. And she got quite a following, and people are really excited about it. I said, gee, you know. But in any event, it's become a, a, a staple here. And it keeps you up on the current events and how that affects us in the Word of God and in our spiritual warfare. And uh, she's got something here for you. And uh, I'm just going to turn it over to her. All righty. We're back. I am having so much fun with the Gap News, y'all. And Sister Michelle, I guess it was a couple of weeks ago, she sent me a message and she said, man, that was a good Gap News. And then she said, have you heard of Judge Michael Ludic? And uh, I said to myself, I have heard of him. I never heard of him until the January 6th hearings. Uh, Michael Luddick is a very, very conservative judge, but also very, very well-respected. And he's a retired judge now. So we're going to let him kind of walk us through his opinions on what's been going on. Today, almost two years after that fateful day in January 2021 that still Donald Trump and his allies and supporters are a clear and present danger to American democracy. That's not because of what happened on January 6th. It's because to this very day, the former president, his allies and supporters pledge that in the presidential election of 2024, if the former president or his anointed successor as the Republican Party presidential candidate were to lose that election, that they would attempt to overturn that 2024 election in the same way that they attempted to overturn the 2020 election, but succeed in 2024 where they failed in 2020. I would have never uttered one single one of those words unless the former president and his allies were candidly and proudly speaking those exact words to America. It's only Tuesday, so that means Trump's legal woes this week are only beginning as he sits with his latest major loss today, a rejection of his claims of absolute immunity for things he did while he was president. Thursday could be the start of the next one when the Supreme Court hears oral arguments on whether Donald Trump disqualified himself from the ballot in Colorado under the 14th Amendment by engaging in insurrection. And while it's really hard to picture these justices keeping Trump off the ballot, a ruling that could have an impact on Trump's eligibility in 
all 50 states, not just Colorado, Trump's team appears ready to give them nothing to avoid doing so. In their final brief yesterday, if, it, if that's anything uh, of a window into their plan to present an argument, it defies logic. It argues that no court, not even the Supreme Court of the United States, has the ability to decide that he is ineligible and one that Judge Michael J. Michael Ludig calls an 11th hour Hail Mary that he considers, quote, tantamount to an acknowledgement that they have all but concluded their arguments have become so weakened by the briefing of respondents and their supporting Amici that they, the belief, they, they believe the Supreme Court is likely to hold the former president as is disqualified under the 14th Amendment. Joining us now is that former federal judge, Michael Ludig. Uh, judge, good to see you again. I, I, I think you were being pretty clear with the fact that you thought that was a ridiculous argument that the Supreme this is not for the Supreme Court to 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 adjudicate uh, th thank you very much for having me uh, with you this evening Ali uh, l let me begin this discussion by reference to today's decision uh, today's decision from the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia uh, circuit w was historic it's a landmark uh, decision holding that a, a former president is never immune from federal prosecution for offenses committed against the United States when he or she was president uh, of the United States. Uh, I do not expect the Supreme Court to review that decision by the, the D.C. Circuit. In the D.C. Circuit case, uh, a, a number of my friends and, and former colleagues in six Republican administrations prior to the Trump administration filed a, uh, an amicus brief with the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals in which we argued that a president is never uh, immune from federal prosecution for offenses committed while he was president. But if there's one single instance in which he or she is not immune, it is where, as here with the former president, he or she attempted to remain in power in violation of the executive vesting clause of the Constitution, preventing the peaceful transfer of power and denying his successor, in this instance, President Joe Biden, the, the powers of the presidency to which he had rightfully uh, become entitled. In today's opinion, the Supreme, uh, the uh, Court of Appeals actually said that a president would not be uh, uh, immune from prosecution for that criminal offense. Now, that's where Thursday's argument in the Supreme Court comes in. Mm -hmm. My colleagues and I made the same argument as to uh, the, uh, our uh, point that the former president engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution of the United States when he attempted to remain in power beyond his four-year mm -hmm. term, depriving his successor uh, of, of the rightful powers of the presidency. So today's decision by the, the D.C. Circuit did not hold that the president is arguably disqualified under the 14th Amendment from the presidency, but it did speak very pointedly to the argument that he might be disqualified under the 14th Amendment. How do you parse the distinction between today's uh, decision, which implies that a president in, in, in this particular instance is not immune from prosecution? Doesn't mean he's guilty of anything. It just means he's, as they called him, uh, citizen Trump. He, he is uh, subject to the same prosecutions, the same, the same terms and limits that the rest of us are. And your point, because uh, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment discusses qualification for the presidency. It's got nothing to do with crimes committed or, um, or, uh, 
you know, it's not a penalty. It's a, as you have pointed out to me, it's a qualification. He just doesn't meet the requirements to be the president of the United States. Tell me how, as a judge, you parse the distinction between those two, or is it is it is it meaningful? Well, it's it's, it's certainly meaningful. There is no necessary legal connection between what the D.C. Circuit said today and what the Supreme Court must decide beginning on Thursday. But it is uh, of, of supreme importance that the D.C. Circuit today spoke to exactly what the former president is alleged to have done and said in the context of its opinion that no president would ever be immune from prosecution for that. Now it's up for the, to the Supreme Court to decide whether the former president's insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution of the United States, when he attempted to, to remain in power beyond his four-year term, and deprive the, his successor, Joe Biden, of, of the powers of the presidency, or attempted to, whether that is an insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution of the United States within the meaning of uh, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. Now, I, as I said, my colleagues and I have filed a brief in the Supreme Court on that very question, and we have argued to the Supreme Court that that is the quintessential insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution of the United States. Uh, and, and of course, we believe that that uh, uh, on its face disqualifies him, the former president from the presidency in 2024, provided the Supreme Court concludes that Section 3 actually extends to the President of the United States of America, which we are confident also that the court will do. Uh, today's uh, ruling, uh, Jake, was uh, both astonishing and unprecedented, not for its decision of the exceedingly narrow question presented by the case, though that issue was important, but rather for its decision to reach and decide a myriad of the other constitutional issues uh, surrounding disqualification under 14th Amendment. In reaching and deciding those questions unnecessarily, the court, the majority, as the concurrences said, effectively decided that the former president will never be disqualified from holding the presidency in 2024, or ever, for that matter. But even more importantly, as the concurrence said, effectively the court today decided that no person in the future will ever be disqualified under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, uh, regardless whether he or she has engaged in an insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution of the United States. Yeah, it's I, I, I didn't get to my, my main response to your question. Uh, the, 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 it was clear to me from the first several questions by the court that the Supreme Court of the United States did not intend ever on, in this case, to decide the question whether the former president is disqualified under the 14th Amendment. What's more, by the time the argument was over, it was crystal clear to me and to others who, who study the court and, 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 and the 14th Amendment that I don't believe that the Supreme Court intends ever to address the question uh, of whether the former president is disqualified under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. 
Good afternoon from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Thank you for joining us for a special two-hour, 4 p.m. edition of All In. It's a little under uh, in, a little under an hour ago. The Supreme Court rejected a proposal from Special Counsel Jack Smith to accelerate a decision on Donald Trump's claim of presidential immunity in his federal election criminal interference case. Now, the one-sentence reply, uh, the order from the Supreme Court reads, "Quote: The petition for writ of certiorari before judgment is denied." In other words. We're not going to speed this through. We're not touching it before it goes through the normal appeals process, which is the appellate circuit court in D.C. Judge. Nicole, it, it, it's unimaginable to me that the Supreme Court will decide this case before the last day of the term, which typically is around July 1st. Mm. If that's if that's true, then it's equally unimaginable to me that the former president will be tried before the election uh, in November. They're returning as Trump more aggressively touts January 6 rioters as patriots, ramps up his racist incendiary rhetoric and embraces some of his most provocative loyalists. So we're talking about people like Corey Lewandowski, Paul Manafort, Roger Stone. Michael, what does this tell you about what to expect from his campaign in the coming months? All hell's gonna break loose. The, this is this is uh, all in. Um, Manafort coming back in is to to set up control of the convention so that there are no uh, slippages. You know, having having Trump's people on the rules committee to control the rules of the convention, uh, the flow of the convention. You've got uh, Lewandowski and you've got others who uh, are are keen political operatives uh, for Trump uh, that will be out and about in, in enforcing a strategy that will take no prisoners. Uh, and I don't think people really appreciate exactly what we're going to be in for. And, and then when you layer on top of that, the political use of AI um, by some of these folks uh, who, who know how to utilize that, that type of platform, um, this campaign is going to be very difficult on the country because these folks are all about one thing and one thing only, Donald Trump's absolute return to power. It's not about return to the presidency, people. It's about his return to power mm. because the man has told us what he wants to do. And everyone's still walking around, especially Democrats, with their heads someplace other than in this game, worried about Joe Biden's age. You better worry about the 78-year-old man who says he wants to be a dictator, not the 81-year-old man who's trying to protect a, a democracy. And that's what this breakdown is, extremism versus freedom. Hmm. And Donald Trump has very clearly declared where he stands. And then I see the disinfectant. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or and on a scale of one to ten how would you rate your response to this crisis i'd rate it a ten i think we've done a great job what do you say to americans who are watching you right now who are scared uh, i say that you're a terrible reporter that's what i say yeah no i don't take responsibility at all we're doing i think really really well i'll tell you what how a thousand americans are dying a day they are dying that's true and you have it is what it is Well, I just wanted to uh, end up that whole thing with, uh, I'm going to start at the end. Joe Biden put out a post. Donald Trump said to America, are you better off today than you were this time in 2020? So that's what that was about. But let's talk about Judge Ludic. First of all, he did a great job of explaining clear and present danger as far as from the January 6th um, hearings and all of that. And then he went into what's going on with this 14th Amendment and what's the matter with the Supreme Court that they are taking that stance. He was, he was very opposed to that. And then we talked about the whole thing of immunity and where Judge Ludic stood on that. What do you have to say about um, all of that? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing to me how when people get into politics, 
and they forget all about their religion and all about Christianity and Jesus and all that kind of thing and just do what they're uh, told to do and do exactly uh, uh, or, or they can just take power and do whatever they want to do and all that kind of thing but the to even conceive of a situation where anyone is above the law is just, you know, that's that's not only not right on the Constitution, that's not right uh, 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 biblically either. Or just even morally, you know. And, and biblically takes in morally. Oh, yeah, I agree. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's just amazing to me that it's gone down this road as far as it has. And now you're sitting here waiting for those nine omnipotent people to tell us what the what the situation is when we know the situation. We know what the answer should be. That's right. But there's a possibility that they may ignore what the answer should be. So, well, I mean, it's, it's that's why I just say, hey, God is still in control. He's sitting on that throne <laughs> and he will judge. Well, and we have to stay prayed up. We have to stay prayed up. Uh, because it's true, um, we we of course we exercise our right to vote. I hope everybody got out and voted this week, um, and we definitely have to organize and vote in uh, November, all up and down the ticket. But um, I I felt like that he he just put a spotlight on all the things that are going on from Trumpism to this Supreme Court that we have and, you know, the direction that they're taking, which um, is stunning to me. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that the uh, you have to keep in mind, Micah 6 says is that you must uh, do justice. Do justice. And so when you put that overlay on all that, that, uh, that we just saw and all that, you have to say, you know, where's the justice, you know? Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see. Good gap news. Good gap news. We sure keep you guys up front on what's going on. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Thank you, Marvel. Now, uh, 